you're still watching unsubbed, aren't you? Hey, subscribe, will ya? Welcome back to another video in our WordPress development series. Uh, in the last video, we kept things pretty simple. It was a little longer than I wanted it to be, unfortunately. Uh, but it was showing you how to use those get variables to do actions and then display a message and actually do the action. So currently at this point, our plugin is successfully importing and deleting. And like I said, renewing is a little harder. We have to take our last published at video and then compare it up against all the new ones coming in to be for their published at dates. And uh, I'm not, uh, we'll write that in the upcoming, in an upcoming video, but for the moment it's a little, it's just going to sidetrack us because it actually is quite a bit of um, logic on how to handle that. So by logic, I mean like lines of code. And so we're just going to stick with these two for the moment and then we'll deal with this one later. In this video, let's head back to our settings page because now we have a successful import and a successful delete. So what I want to do is head back to our settings page and I actually want to make these savable variables. Because at this point, if we do, if we, um, if we save the shortcode changes, nothing will actually change. This will work because we have these established in our settings, and I'm going to go right now and show you that. All right, so back over here in our uh, WP10 test admin, let's actually just close this side menu up so you can follow right where I'm at. In the includes and in the WP10, this is just the name of your uh, plugin. This is going to have all of your uh, admin hooks. And as you see here, we actually, in an earlier video, we created a um, general settings, registering of general settings. And I'm, I know that I could make these the same. I could register them both under the same settings. But just for the sake of this video to show you how to do two separate settings fields, we're going to create two separate settings fields for these. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to do a very similar copy to what we had already built. Meaning we're going to take this line right here, and we're going to copy it, and we're just going to paste it get a little lazy on it. We could actually do, you know, we could do whatever, but we're going to do, we're going to hook the admin in it function and we're going to do register WP10 short. I'm just going to call this short code settings. Okay. And now we have a new, we need to make a function for this inside of this file. If you or not inside here, I'm sorry, in the admin, cause it's calling to the plugin admin class. So we need to take this head to our plugin admin class. Now that is in the admin and then right here, and then if we scroll down where I set my last one, you're going to see we have a general settings function right here, register the menu and submenu uh, items for the area, but it also has the, uh, let's see, actually this, this commenting was wrong anyway, needed to be the settings areas, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to say another public function, and I just copied that to paste it, and we're going to open up a new function, and we're going to say register the shortcode settings. All right, now this is pretty simple, right? Uh, we have to go over back to our um, settings callback page and we have to do similar to what's happening here. Uh, the action is options.php. This is built into WordPress. It's a WordPress built-in feature that will save your settings um, so you can use the get option and set option for these settings later. And so down here in our other form, you see we have just a basic form right here. We need to kind of do something similar. So we need to create a method and the method needs to be a post type method. And then we need to create the action and we need to make the action equal to um, options.php. So now this form is going to do the right thing. It's going to go to the options.php. And we already did give them proper names. And we're going to go ahead and do the get option outputs once we have these established as well. We'll do that in just a minute. But at the moment, what we need to do is we need to kind of copy both of these here, and we need to paste them in down here. We have to open them up in a, their own PHP. Let's see about this. All right. So now we kind of have those set up. Now, this is not WP10 custom settings. Uh, this is not what it is called. If you look in our... Uh, register settings that's because it's the registering the setting we're gonna actually change this this is gonna be uh, register setting we could actually take this from above but in this case I'm just gonna just write it myself now we are ready to create a couple of variables as right, so the first thing is we're gonna figure out what we want to call this we're gonna call this WP10 short code settings and then what we're gonna call this one is whatever we want to call it in the database and uh, it was number to display if you go back to the callback page it's actually the Y post count it's the number of videos to show and in this case let's just call it Y post uh, count maybe yeah that's good 
or why post count show. I want to make it something slightly different than the title in the database. And then let's copy this and paste it again. And the second one, let's call it, this one is the um, video style type. Let's just call this Y output style. Okay? So those are our variables that we're now going to have. You know what? Um, I don't think we, actually I think they need to be named the same. Upon further just thinking about it to myself, I was like, wait a second. You know what? I think they need to be named the same in this particular case. So we're going to name those the same. All right, perfect. So that's kind of what we want to do here is just name those the same like that. And that's going to set up our WP10 shortcode settings. And then we need to come back here and we need to tell it that inside of the set settings in the do settings sections. So now we have its own separate setting sections um, set up. And this is the type submit button. Technically at this point it should work. So let's head back to our settings. Let's change this to two or like five and save the short code. All right, now it's not gonna display five. Well, we both know why that's happening. That's because the value needs to be equal to the get option. And we can do that just like this. We can pull a PHP. And this is also gonna let us know if this field is saving properly. And we're just gonna say get option. And then we're going to just space it out. And what did we call it? We called it Y post count. Let's do a refresh. Right, there it is. All right, perfect. So now the selected item inside of a selected item box is a little more tricky for determining what the user has set. What we could do to determine that is we could actually, uh, we have to actually make it selected. We have to say if, uh, this is an inline statement for PHP. It has to say if the get option is equal to this, then we need to put this as selected. Okay, and we're gonna do that. I'll show you how to do that right now. So for those of you that don't know, in uh, HTML, uh, HTML5, when an option is selected in an option box, when the page loads, it has to actually look like this. And that would have this item as selected. Well, how do we do that when we get an option from the database? It's actually pretty easy. Uh, the value that's saved into the database when this is uh, saved in our get or our form field settings, it saves actually the word image left, image center, enter, image right. So here's what we need to do. And I, I can actually echo the variable and you would see like right now it says image left or image center or image right. Like let's say image center is what we want it to say. So right now it's gonna save that but it's not gonna show it. It's just gonna say image left because we don't have it echoing that. So. Anyway, it's actually pretty simple. Uh, you just open a PHP right here inside the tag, and we're just gonna make an if statement with some opening brackets. So we have the if statement here, the arguments, and then what it's gonna do. And we need to say this, if get option, and we need to close it. We need to say get option, and what do you think the option is? It's the display type is equal equal to the name of the option because that's what it should have set in the database right so if get option is equal to this image left then here's what we got to do echo just the word selected and put a space on it now it's going to echo selected right here let's take this exact code and let's place it in each of these options and change the word, right? This is if they selected image center, we'd want this one to display, and if it was image right, we'd want this one to display. Now, if I change it to center, it should display center. Look at that. That means that these are now being successfully saved into our database. And so how would you actually go about adding more video or more variables like say you wanted to add um do you want your titles to be omitted yes or no do you want your video descriptions to be a certain character length do you want to use higher low res images do you want to use a light box to display it do you want to blah 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 you can do whatever you wanted and then we're i'll show you how you can change it at your short code the last thing we're going to do in this video is establish our short code because we need to actually make this short code right here in order for the videos to display and for these functions to work. But as, as of right now, now all of our options pages are working. We're using two different settings fields, which is fine. But if you wanted to add more settings, obviously, you need just to add more 
form group items, go back to your administrative page, register that setting right here by adding a new setting, and then you're all good to go. And now you can add unlimited settings, then we can use them in our shortcode output. So now let's go ahead and add the shortcode. So in an earlier video in the series, I showed you the code necessary for adding uh, shortcode calls to your plugin. Um, it's actually kind of a little bit complicated. There's a couple different areas that you have to uh, go to in order to do this. Um, starting with, if you're inside your includes folder, you have to go to your loader, and then you have to add some shortcode parameters like this code here and uh, this code here, which are um, registering actions filters and registering shortcodes with your um, WordPress installation. There's a, you can go back and refer to that video and that allows us to do something much simpler which is back in our uh, includes plugin name you're gonna if you go up you'll see under define public hooks if it's a publicly accessed shortcode we can actually just register short, short codes just like this. And in this one we kinda have uh, an example one I left we're actually gonna add a new one. Add shortcode for WordPress or for our plugin. Now we're going to just do the copy and paste from the line above that I already wrote from our earlier video. WP Shorty 1, that's not what we're going to call it. Um, we're actually going to call it something different. All right, WP 10 Shorty 1, and then that's actually what, what it's going to call to. And uh, inside of our public folder in our public file. If you scroll down, you'll see that it's calling WB10 short example. That's the actual callback function it's, it's referring to. So in our case, we're going to call this WP10 vids out, and then we're going to say WP10, that's the short code, WP10 vid, let's just call this display. And then what we're going to do is copy this, and we need to go to our public. I just showed you where that was in your public. And then we're going to drop down this bar and we're going to say output video shortcode function. Here's where the magic takes place. Now we have registered our shortcode. This shortcode right here and technically this shouldn't do anything remember I said we might have to escape this um, let's just go ahead and take a look because I actually registered the shortcode all right good so it's not actually doing anything because uh, this is a public side anyway so that's registering our shortcode and now it's calling and by the way this this code was just successfully added so if there was an error in here it would have thrown it so that's it we've just successfully added our shortcode to our plugin system we uh, Let's see, this is our administrative. We don't need anything in here. This is where we just added our settings. And then we now are going to write our function right here. So our callback is working properly for our settings page. Our importer call is working properly for our import. And now we are basically on to our output of our custom function in our public for the when we go to the front end and apply our short code. So that's really where I think I'm going to end this video. Uh, like I said, if we had had any problems or any errors with it, it would have thrown an error in the, in the WordPress. It wouldn't have let us move forward. And so at this point, guys, everything's functional. We can import videos up to five. We can go change that count. And also, I would probably um, change that in the settings here. I would probably add a new setting here for how many you want to import. It would be really easy to do. And then in the importer, it would do that. But as you know, we're being able to import, and we can currently delete all. They are functional. And then in our settings, we can actually save our number of videos to display and our um, our type, our display type, as well as our YouTube API and our channel we're pulling from. We can just change our channel ID to pull from whatever channel we want. So like I said, that's where I'm going to go ahead and end it uh, because our next video is actually going to be, guess what, writing our shortcode to actually display these videos out. And then like I said, you can customize it however you see fit. You can make it so it takes away titles. So you can, I mean, all kinds of stuff. And we'll probably even work on it to do all kinds of stuff together just to give you more examples. But that's going to wrap us up. Like I say in the beginning of every video, hey, if you're not subscribed, subscribe, will you? Uh, putting a lot of effort in these videos. Hmm? You ain't even going to subscribe? Just do it. And if you uh, like this video, make sure to give it a like and um, shoot me a comment if anything here was confusing for you or if you need help on it. Like I said, anything about short codes or anything you're seeing here can be referenced earlier in this course. Uh, every video is like around 10 minutes long, 10 to 15 minutes. So it's easy to find what you're looking for. Uh, I, other than that, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.